In the last two sections where we are focusing on increasing, decreasing in extrema, or maximums or minimums, in concavity and inflection points, we cared about how that affected the graph. So in this section, we're going to talk more about graphs and how to graph things, even if they didn't give us the original function in the first place. So we've been a little bit spoiled because we can always take the original function and plug it in the graphing calculator and double check our answers and go from there. In this section, we are not going to have that luxury. We just have to take the information that they give us and do our best to sketch a graph from that information without having the original graph. So let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. So here, it doesn't give us the original function but it gives us information in this specific example about the first derivative. It tells us that f prime of 0, f prime of 1, f prime of 2, all of those are equivalent to 0. So let's talk about what that can actually mean in part A, when it tells us f prime of something is equal to 0. So we can think about this when we were trying to figure out the increasing, decreasing maximum as a minimum. We know that we set our derivative equal to zero. That told us the critical values on our graph. And what critical values tells us is that we have either a maximum, a minimum, or a plateau at those places there. And the reason is is because we're talking about slope, and that's when our slope is equal to zero. So that's when our slope is going to give us a horizontal tangent line. So this tells us that 0, 1, and 2, we have possible max, mins, and plateaus. We just need to figure out which one of those it is. So that gives us information, but not precise information at this time. So let's look at what part B tells us. Part B tells us when our derivative is less than 0. Well, remember derivatives gives us slope. So that tells us when our slope is negative or when our graph is decreasing. So we know our graph is decreasing when our x values are less than 0 and greater than 2. So this means that we can start to sketch a graph of this function. So my information is just given from 0 to 2, so that's where I'm basically going to sketch this graph. Okay, I know it's decreasing less than 0, so let me plot something decreasing less than 0. And I know it's decreasing greater than 2, so something decreasing greater than 2. In part C, that tells us when our derivative is greater than 0. Well, that means that we have positive slope there, or our slope is positive. That tells us when our graph is increasing. So in this problem, our graph is increasing between 0 and 1 and increasing between 1 and 2. So you might just think that it's increasing the whole way from 0 to 2. Now let's go back and let's match up what our critical values we have. So we knew at 0 we have a critical value which means I have to have a maximum or plateau. And if I look at 0, I see I have a minimum value there, so that's okay. At 2, I have a critical value, so I have to have a max, min, or plateau at 2. And if I look at that, that seems okay. But I also see that I have 1 as a critical value. So I need to have a max, min, or plateau at 1. And the way that I've sketched this here is I don't see that. And you might have also wondered why this was split into two intervals. And it's because at 1, precisely, my graph is not increasing. It's plateaued there. So let me kind of round this out and let me have it at 1, I have a plateau. So my graph is decreasing to 0, increasing but plateaus at 1, increasing up to 2, where I have a maximum at 2, and then it's decreasing past 2. So this gives me a possible sketch of my original function. Now there might be a little bit of discrepancy between my graph and your graph, but the only possible discrepancy that we can have is where this graph is plotted on our y-axis. 
This graph could be shifted up a little bit or shifted down a little bit, but basically this shape of the graph must be exactly the same. Okay, now the information that this graph gave me was just first derivative information. So let's see what happens if they give us something beyond first derivative information. So I have in a second example here. In this example, it tells us first derivatives in part 1 and 2, part A and B. And remember, my first derivative is greater than 0. That tells me my graph is increasing there. And when my graph is less than 0, that tells me my graph is decreasing there. So that means I can sketch a possible graph of this given that information. And this information looks like it ranges from negative 1 to 3, so that's why I've sketched it. Okay, I know my graph is increasing less than negative 1 and greater than 3. So let me graph something increasing less than 1 and increasing greater than 3. I know my graph is decreasing, decreasing between negative 1 and 3. So that gives me this graph here. All right, now let me talk about here. We also see that we have the second derivatives in part C and D. Remember the second derivatives are concavity. So part C tells us when it is concave down because that's when I am less than 0. So my graph is going to have the frown shape. Now remember it might not be a complete frown shape, but anything that resembles that shape there. And in part D, when I have my second derivative greater than 0, that tells me we have concave up, like a cup, or anything that resembles that motion there. So that's pretty much what I have here, except for if I looked at my sketch that I have it right now, I would guess my inflection point to be about right here. What this is telling me is that my concavity splits at 2, and so that's telling me that I have an inflection point when x is equal to 2. So my inflection point needs to happen about right here. So I need to make that minor adjustment in between my increasing and decreasing motion. So now if I sketch this, I have increasing up until negative 1 and decreasing to there, but let me round it out a little bit farther so I get my inflection point where I want it to be. Still decreasing past 2, so there, and then increasing past 3. So now I have my shape of my graph with its increasing and decreasing, but now it also looks like my inflection point is happening here rather than in the split like I wanted it. That's what part C and D told me different than part A and B. And so now if I get rid of all the rest of this, I have the sketch of the graph that I was looking for. Okay, I have one more example to for you of this type of nature where they just give us information without the original function and we want to sketch the graph of it. But instead of giving it in the last two examples where they just told us greater than and less than zeros, here they are giving us the sign charts that we're used to following. So this one might even be a little bit easier than the last two examples because you see some shapes that are given to you. So. Sketching this up, everything's happening at 1, so that's the only important point that I see here. At my first sign chart here, that's talking about my first derivative, so that's talking about my slope. I see that it's decreasing up until 1, and then it's increasing past 1. Now, at first glance, you might just think that this is a parabola. Seems reasonable. But then we have to look at our second derivative here. And our second derivative tells us that this is concave down on both sides of this. So concave down less than 1 and concave down greater than 1. Now, when I have students do this problem on their own, they think, oh, I have concave down less than 1, and I have concave down greater than 1. And maybe we might even round this out in the middle a little bit. And this is the graph that I see a lot of the times as the answer. 
but this is not correct because this does not match our increasing and decreasing graph. If this was the case, I would have increasing, then decreasing, then increasing, then decreasing. So this is not the precise graph that I'm looking for. Remember, it's only decreasing here and it's only increasing there. So let's try and do this again but without overdoing my concavity motion. So remember when it's concave down, it can look like the full frown shape or it can look like some portion of this frown shape. And so that's what's happening. I'm decreasing, then increasing. And then my concavity is concave down from here. And then it is also concave down from here. So this now is a graph that fits with both of my sign charts without over it doing anything and without conflicting with either one of my sign charts. Okay. So hopefully with these three examples, you can take any information given from the first derivative and the second derivative, or even the original function, and sketch a possible graph without knowing the original function.